Welcome to this emergency end of day's update coming to you from Dayton Living Word right here in Dayton, Ohio. You can turn around and look. We just had a great service on Sunday night. Great crowds came out. We're wanting to come back with what's happened uh, yesterday. I was going to, going to film one yesterday, but I wanted to wait a little bit of time. What a crazy deal with you know, Hamas uh, attacking Israel. Interesting to see kind of some of the points that came out today and yesterday. I thought yesterday when it happened that it was kind of a trial run from Iran to see how Israel responded because Iran wants to go down and do the exact same things. But we know Hamas is totally sponsored by Iran, and we know that Hezbollah is sponsored by Iran. But let's go back and see what happened. You know, I think they're right, out of right now's count, over several thousand rockets fired at Israel. And uh, I think there's about seven to 800 people that were killed and a couple thousand injuries. It's so horrible. The interesting thing about it is what, what Hamas did was they came out and took out almost 50 Israeli army posts and then broke into the southern part of Israel and then came back the other way and hauled hostages back into Gaza and paraded them on the streets. They went into uh, uh, movie theaters and took kids out and shot them in the streets. Absolutely horrific. The thing that freaks me out is there was no intel at all whatsoever, but it looks like Iran's been helping them for several months get ready for this. And not only that, the Iron Dome normally takes out about 85 to 87 percent of the rockets, and the Iron Dome only took out about 10 to 15 to 20 percent of the rockets. So what happened was is there was a cyber attack on, on Israel's defense systems, and that makes me know that Iran did that and Russia did that. Iran doesn't even have the technology to do that, so they had to have Russia help them. So all of this is a setup for a precursor for Iran coming down on Israel. This was the, the preemptive strike, really, you might call it. Uh, people are talking like, how long is this going to last? I think it's going to go on for a while, and Israel's going to have to respond in an absolutely ballistic fashion in the past, they've been so concerned about public relations and what they have came across as by trying to not hurt very many people. Get ready for there to be some ugly stuff about Israel. Some really bad things are going to happen. The publicity against Israel is going to be horrific. But this is what we do. We pray for the peace of Jerusalem and we pray for our brothers. This is a part of really a setup for the tribulation period. Things are only going to get worse. It has to get really, really bad for Israel to start looking for, man, we got to have the Messiah. The problem is, is the Antichrist is going to come on the scene and they're going to think he's the Messiah. So it's being set up for that right now with this happening. So what the crazy thing was with all this happening is you had Hezbollah fire some rockets from the north as well. Israel responded a little bit, but you got uh, everybody surrounding Israel trying to get involved. Don't even get into what you have on the part of Syria right there on the other part of Israel. So Israel's completely surrounded with basically Iran. Now, I know that Damascus is going to be removed from being a city, so you watch. You'll probably have Iran haul some more missiles down. Israel has to take them out with an airstrike. And there's probably going to be a nuke in there, and Damascus is going to get taken off the map, and then that will be a hook in the jaw for Russia to come down and go, well, i got to try to take, take care of the Palestinians. How much of that we'll see, I don't know, but I don't think we'll be here for the Ezekiel 38 war but you're watching the setup for these things the Bible said you'd see just before the coming of the Lord. So we don't let it freak us out. We're steadfast. We're unmovable. Always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that Jesus is our protection. He's our King. He's given you authority. You don't have to be concerned about your safety. You speak the word over your family, your word over your, your, your kids and your children and your job. And America needs to do what America is supposed to do right now, along with the rest of the nations of the world. I saw a really good response from our, our government, but there needs to be a bigger response from the rest of the world as well. Because there's a perfect opportunity for the world to bless Israel right now. So we'll come back on Wednesday and we'll see what's happened. But I wanted to get with you a little bit ahead of time because this is such a horrific thing that's happened. Let's pray for Israel. Let's pray for the peace of Jerusalem. And let's pray for those Israeli citizens that are going through this. Let's lift them up with our prayers. And we look forward to seeing this next Wednesday. We'll see what's going to happen just here before the coming of the Lord. Have a blessed, wonderful few days. We'll see you Wednesday. Thanks for joining us today at the End of Days Update. If you'd like to be notified every time there's a new post, just go to the edu at josephmorris.com and subscribe to receive email alerts. If these posts and updates have been a blessing to you, please consider making a one-time donation to help get the message out or even becoming a monthly partner with Joseph Morris Ministries. Thanks again for tuning in to the EDU, and we'll see you next week.